my name is Melanie Dugan. I live in Kingston. Um, I'm a writer. I have two kids and my partner Dawn is a visual artist. I'm going to be part of it um, as an author, uh, which is a lot of fun. The inaugural year I was involved with it as somebody who was um, dealing with promotions and publicity, so it's a lot of fun to be on the other side of the equation now. It's a great festival. The name of my book is Dead Beautiful. It's based on the myth of Persephone, uh, which I always liked. Um, I liked it as a child growing up. Then when I had my own children, I read it to them and I saw it in a totally different light. I started doing research on it and found out a lot of interesting things about the myth and uh, that's what sort of triggered me to write it. Well, you're there to um, interest the audience. I think it's m there's more pressure on you as a writer. Um, you have to engage with the audience. You have to make your book interesting to them or your workshop or your um, what reading interesting to people. So I think the pressure's on you when you're there as a writer. When you're there as an audience member, you can contribute. You can ask questions, uh, but really we're there to open the world of books and writing to people in the audience. Uh, Stephen Hyten. I'm a novelist, short story writer, poet, and sometimes I do some translations and I'll be at the, uh, the festival um, this September reading from a short story book. I was invited to be part of the festival and uh, I, I help out with the festival in other ways and uh, I know how good it is so of course I wanted to be involved. I think this really creates a kind of buzz, just as apparently during the London Olympics you could see people out running and cycling all over London, people who didn't usually exercise. They got interested in exercising just because they were watching all these athletes on TV all the time, athletics are in the air. Likewise, when there's a, a really successful, vibrant literary festival happening in your city, you get more interested in literature if you're... Uh, if your inclination is to read books, you're probably going to read more books. If your inclination is to write, um, you're going to get more serious about your writing. So I think it, it uh, has, has a great effect in, in both those ways, with both those demographics, the readers and the writers. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, Ian, uh, Ian Reed. March 2013, I do have a, my, my next book is coming out. So uh, I, will, I will likely be here at the festival next year. This year, just as a spectator. I, I, would, uh, I would highly recommend people uh, pick up Pasha Mala's book, People Park. Uh, he's coming to the festival and uh, I've, I've read it and I, I don't, you're not going to read too many books like this one, uh, specifically in, in Canada, I would say. Um, it's one of the things I liked about it was you don't really uh, uh, get the hang of it until the end. And I think a lot of books, um, even good books, you, you, kind of, you kind of have it figured out a little bit uh, right from the start, and the end kind of confirms what you what you uh, were thinking right at the beginning. I think this book is kind of the opposite, so you need to read it through to the end, um, and and when you do, it's it's you you um, you really get something out of it. Um, so it's it, it takes a little work, I would say, this book. It's it it, it um, might not be uh, deemed as easy or or uh, breezy, but it's certainly worth it. Uh, so I like that, and there and there's humor in it too. So there is there is. It, um, I don't want to give the impression that it's 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 difficult. It's just um, it's a, it's an interesting book. It's unique. Um, I would read it. You know, I'm looking forward to, mm. to, to going to see him, and he's he's kind of he'll be uh, with a few other novelists, I, I believe, at his his reading. Uh, and then I'm just I'm just uh, looking at the program now, and uh, uh, there are a lot of things that I'm going to go to. I think I'm going to take in a lot of it this year. It seems like it's another interesting year. Um, so I haven't had a chance yet. A lot of poets this year, so I'll probably uh, see some of that. Um, and yeah, I think I'm, I will hopefully plan on spending uh, a few days here. Yeah, I was here in uh, 2010. I had a book here, and uh, it was I really enjoyed it. I did a couple events, I met some other writers, met a lot of readers, and uh, it was my my first book. So it was nice to have the uh, the inaugural reading at the festival here. Uh, I know Marilyn and some of the other people, so it was, uh, it, was it felt comfortable to be here. It's kind of nice, to, I mean, it's nice to, for both, it's kind of, I think, probably uh, suits me a little better in some ways to go as the spectator, because then I can just kind of uh, sit in the back and uh, 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 listen to other authors um, and hear what they have to say, and I don't have to worry about, uh, uh, you know, uh, looking fancy. I can just kind of wear my, uh, uh, my red.
ratty clothes and blend in with the crowd. Uh, not that the crowd looks ratty, but uh, I, I don't have to worry about anything and, and uh, it's a little more relaxing. So. My name is Diane Schomperman and I'm the author of 11 books. Uh, 10 of them are fiction, one of them is non-fiction. I won the Governor General's Award in 1998 for English fiction. And in 2008, I received the Marion Engel Award. I've been in, living in Kingston since 1987. And um, I've known Marilyn Simons for a very long time. And I have, over the last couple of years, had various events at Writers' Fest. It's a little more stressful going as a, an author because you know that you have, I have three different events that I'm doing this year. So there'll be, you know, preparation for those. Um, I mean, I think everybody gets a little nervous when they're the one that has to be up on the stage. It's a lot easier to sit in the audience. But, um, you know, you're, you're excited but nervous and hoping that lots of people show up. And so it's exciting in its own way. Well, I think in any case, no matter what the book is, the ideas come from a variety of places things that you have experienced in your own life, things that you've read in other people's books, and all those various ideas kind of get mixed together and end up leading you in, in the direction of the book that you want to write. Uh, my most recent book is called At a Loss for Words, which was published in 2008 by HarperCollins. This is the story of a long-distance relationship that is fraught with a lot of problems and um, the bulk of their relationship is conducted by emails back and forth between the two, the man and the woman. The woman is a writer but in the midst of this relationship she finds herself suffering from a serious case of writer's block. So the book begins, I am a writer who cannot write. There are many reasons for this. For starters, I didn't sleep well last night. In fact, I haven't slept well for many nights in a row. For weeks maybe, months even. I used to keep track of my sleepless nights, but now I've lost count. It was too depressing to continue logging one wretched night after another. Perhaps I haven't had a good night's sleep in years. Perhaps I haven't had a good night's sleep in my entire adult life. Perhaps not even before that. When I was six, seven, eight years old, my mother used to give me Valium to make me sleep. Sometimes a whole tablet, sometimes just a half. I remember her at the kitchen counter at midnight, wearing the frilly yellow pajamas she called baby dolls, trying to cut up the little pill with my father's penknife. It was a tricky and frustrating procedure, this halving of the pill. I remember the sound the knife blade made when it finally cut through and hit the counter hard. Sometimes one or both halves flew out from under the blade, and then I had to crawl around on the kitchen floor until I found it. Under the table, under the radiator, under the edge of the counter, or just lost in the swirly, multicolored pattern of the worn linoleum. Mother's little helper, indeed. <laughs> 